From a crazy rainbow cloud over Haikou City, China that had the internet buzzing, and a man who braved a frozen tundra to snowboard during a solar eclipse, to a stunning cloud waterfall in the mountains of southern China, and a wall of molten lava in Hawaii that slowly consumed one person's car. Here are some of the craziest one in a billion moments in nature. Haikou City is the capital and most populated city in Hainan Province, China. Just over 2 million people live within the built-up area, and all 2 million saw something incredible on August 21st of 2022. The internet could only describe it as a rainbow cloud over the city. Some were quick to call it fake. Others blamed aliens. Was it some sort of extraterrestrial phenomenon, or was there an earthly explanation? What you're looking at is called a pileus or scarf cloud. They're smooth clouds that form on top of dense, puffy white clouds. They occur thanks to updrafts from passing thunderstorms. Simply put, it's when one cloud wears another like a crown or a scarf. The colors are an atmospheric optical phenomenon called cloud iridescence. It's when ice crystals and water droplets in the cloud diffract sunlight instead of bending the light through them. The colors aren't as neat and orderly as a typical rainbow. Weather Channel meteorologist Jen Carfagno thinks cloud iridescence looks more like pixie dust or unicorn sprinkles. On March 20th of 2015, Stian Oland, a snowboarder and amateur filmmaker, was in the right place at the right time. He hiked up a glacier in Svalbard, a Norwegian archipelago in the Arctic Ocean. He brought his camera, snowboard, and selfie stick to document a once-in-a-lifetime experience, snowboarding during a total solar eclipse. Stian began early to make sure he didn't miss the big moment. Coincidentally, the best place to view the 2015 eclipse was from the Faroe Islands between Iceland and Norway, or from the peaks of Svalbard. Now, the eclipse has just started, but you can't see it yet because it's so bright, so it's gonna be about an hour, then it's gonna to be totally dark. Now it's about 10 minutes left until a total eclipse. Still, it's super bright. Now it's only three minutes left until a total eclipse. What a fantastic day! What a French, ladies and gentlemen. Holy sh! Ay, 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 this is the craziest thing I have absolutely ever seen. Oh my god! Oh. A total solar eclipse on Svalbard. This is the craziest thing I've seen in my entire life. A solar eclipse is when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun, temporarily blocking the sun from a small portion of Earth. Depending on where you are, it can be a total eclipse, like what Steon saw, or a partial eclipse. While a total eclipse occurs somewhere on Earth every 18 months, it takes between 360 to 410 years to happen in the same spot twice. The Sun and Moon appear to be the same size, despite the fact that the Sun's diameter is about 400 times bigger than the Moon's. It's also 400 times farther away from Earth. Those ratios offset to make them appear to be the same size. Leilania Estates is a small community on Hawaii's Big Island. It sits in the shadow of Mount Kilauea, the most active of the Hawaiian volcanoes. In fact, Kilauea is among the most active volcanoes on Earth. In May of 2018, Kilauea erupted, sending lava spewing into Leilani Estates. A total of 24 fissures opened up when Kilauea erupted in the East Rift Zone. Of them, 14 spewed lava within the local community. 
In some areas, lava shot as high as 330 feet and moved at 76 meters per hour. Now, while that's not super fast, a crawling wall of lava can still do some severe damage. I know it's gonna pop, that's why I came to this next pole. Imagine standing by and watching lava consume your car. In hindsight, losing their car was the least of this person's worries. Lava from Kilauea destroyed over 700 homes. It wiped out farms, schools, roads, water systems, and part of the electrical grid. As you can imagine, tourism tanked after Hawaii Volcanoes National Park had to close for safety. The eruption began on May 3rd and lasted until early August. After three months of inactivity, the eruption was declared over in December. In that time, lava had covered about 13.7 square miles of land. It also created about 875 acres of new land in the ocean. Early recovery estimates were around $800 million. If someone came to you and asked, hey, do you want to go skiing on a volcano? What would you say? Well, if you live anywhere near Mount Etna, the tallest peak in Italy south of the Alps, you'd probably say, sure, which face, north or south? On March 9th of 2017, a group of daredevil skiers had the time of their lives when Etna erupted in the middle of a run. These guys were willing to risk it all for a great shot. One wrong move, and they could have gone flying into hot lava. Mount Etna is the most active volcano in Europe and among the most active worldwide. Still, skiers and thrill seekers flock to one of two ski resorts on the mountain. Etna Sud, or South Etna, is the most accessible. Etna Norda, or North Etna, is more scenic, but a little harder to get to. And even for an active volcano, Etna can remain covered in snow until late spring. As the old saying goes, there's always a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Sometimes that pot of gold can take different shapes, like a red sedan stuck on the grass median. On December 20th of 2019, a teenager and his mom were driving through Alabama when they came upon the end of a rainbow. He pulled out his phone and recorded the moment they were about to drive through. Incoming. In just a few seconds, we should be through it. We'll be through the portal. And we'll be in the other world. Are you recording it? Yes, I am recording it, because it's amazing. I've never seen the end of a rainbow, but I guarantee you what, there's no leprechaun down. The end of the rainbow, there's a car. Mom, stop, stop. There's a pot of gold in that car. That's where the end of the rainbow was. Turn around. Turn around! I not. Turn around! You have to! Mom, I was just about to say there's nothing at the end of the rainbow, there's no pot of gold, there's no leprechaun, and there was a car! We have to turn around! Maybe the legends are true. Maybe that was a pot of gold, cleverly disguised as a red sedan. After all, leprechauns are known for their tricks and clever disguises. In reality, that car was just someone stuck on the median. But where does the pot of gold legend come from? 
According to Irish folklore, a poor farming couple found a leprechaun one day who agreed to grant them one wish. But they couldn't decide on something, so they wished for a bunch of stuff. Irked by their greed, the leprechaun said they could have everything they wanted if they could find his pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Little did they know, it was an impossible task. There's also a scientific origin. The sun has to be within 42 degrees of the horizon to make a rainbow. Now, 42 degrees is pretty low, which is why you can only see the top arc of a rainbow and rarely the ends. The Irish understood this as far back as the 17th century. Finding the end of a rainbow is as rare as finding a pot of gold, if not impossible. Water can do amazing things. Just ask these people filming on a lake in Quebec, Canada. On May 8th of 2016, a few Canadians watched and listened as millions of tiny ice needles churned over each other. They could only describe the sound as Mother Nature hard at work. What you're seeing can occur when warming temperatures cause a solid ice mass to splinter into millions of tiny glass-like shards. They float across the lake as it thaws and wind up rolling over each other on the beach. Needle ice can also come from groundwater. You'll see these sticking out of the ground when the soil temperature is above freezing, but the air is below freezing. So, as tiny droplets of groundwater rise, they instantly freeze. You'll usually wake up to find them in your yard since the air temperature is much cooler at night. In the prefecture-level city of Yichun, China, some hikers in the nearby mountains witnessed a truly amazing sight. One could only describe them as cloud waterfalls, a weather phenomenon requiring the perfect conditions. Cloud waterfalls are highly unpredictable, so this certainly classifies as a once-in-a-lifetime experience. That final shot looks like a massive avalanche spilling over the mountain. But what are cloud waterfalls, and why do they happen? Kyle Britton, a reporter for the Weather Network, says cloud waterfalls can happen during clear weather in the moments following heavy rain or snow. The conditions moisten the lower atmosphere, which causes a sea of clouds to form. You'll usually see them over mountain slopes surrounding an elevated plateau. The cooler, dense air on the plateau builds to a point where it can spill over the side. Then it flows downhill due to gravity. On August 27th of 2020, locals in the Blora Regency of central Java, Indonesia ran for cover when the Kisongo mud volcano erupted. Kisongo is part of a geological tourism area. It's surrounded by swamp areas and grasslands and spans hundreds of hectares. While people enjoy exploring the area, a Kisongo eruption can prove extremely dangerous. Locals said they could feel the ground shaking like an earthquake before the volcano erupted. When it did, it spat giant columns of hot mud nearly a hundred feet into the air. The entire eruption lasted 10 minutes, but mud wasn't the only thing spewing out. These volcanoes can be hotbeds for toxic gas.
ngorto lagi ngorto lagi There were four farmers and a buffalo near the volcano when it erupted. They reported feeling weak and dizzy after inhaling the toxic fumes. Moments later, they fainted. Thankfully, all four made full recoveries in the hospital. Their buffalo wasn't so lucky. Villagers recalled a strong sulfur smell that lingered for hours after the volcano erupted. Here's why. The gases are a mix of mostly methane and carbon dioxide. Mud volcanoes and mud pots also have limited water supplies. The microorganisms inside thrive on hydrogen sulfide. That turns into sulfuric acid and breaks down the rocks to form wet clay mud. It also explains the pungent rotten egg smell. Malta is a small European island nation in the Mediterranean Sea. They're 50 miles off the coast of Sicily and home to just over half a million people. In late February of 2019, some were willing to battle gale force winds for a couple of free fish. A violent storm passed over the island. Winds blew over 62 miles per hour, or about as fast as a strong tropical storm. The resulting waves were so big that they lifted fish from the water and threw them into the coastal towns. It was literally raining fish. Now this is what you're seeing in front of me right now. One of the fish farms must have broke open. And there's hundreds and hundreds of fish being washed ashore. <laughs> and these people are here picking up the fish from the middle of the street. Look at this. Unbelievable. Whoa. As you can see, the sea is coming up all the way into the street and these men are just totally soaking wet trying to pick up fish from the street. Our cameraman thinks one of the fish farms must have been broken, releasing hundreds if not thousands of fish into the shallow water. We can't confirm any fish farm damage, but this theory does make sense. Local authorities warned that the fish washing ashore might be unsafe to eat, but that didn't stop these guys from grabbing a few free flounders while they could. The 2019 storm wasn't all fun and games. Infrastructure across the island suffered millions of dollars worth of damage. There were over 450 emergency calls for help, but nobody was seriously injured. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another one of ours just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.